92 degrees outside. I'm going into Mother Nature's air conditioning. This is so cool. I thought it was great. I spent four hours down here. I was so bitter cold. My teeth were chattering when I left. I got into a hot tub, the water steaming. Came out of the bathtub looking like a baked lobster. And my daughter looked at me and she's like, Mom, like you got issues. <laughs> Honey, you don't understand. These men were not prone to alcoholism. Like some people think these dumb cold crackers, all they, all they do is drink. They're alcoholics. Oh no. It was the only thing available to warm their innards. And let me tell you, it is not an arctic cold. It is a deep, penetrating bone chill that you cannot shake. And you are not warm. In mining, if you are dumb, you are dead. And the most intelligent men made mistakes and paid with their lives. From here, you slipped. Remember that thick, thick mud and fog? Back in the day, all you had was basically a little whale oil lamp. It throws off about the same light as the, you know, the taper candles you have for dinner? Cut it down to its lowest lighting point and go into a room, pitch black room. Work with that for 10 to 14 hours. Not a lot of light. But from this point, if you slipped in your bow and you didn't catch that lonely little bar, or one of those other seven men didn't catch you, you went 700 feet to meet your maker. And every 200 feet it would be the same. I think 100 feet would do me in. For me, you're going to pay for the, the chisel and the hammer to drive the holes. And in mining, you got five holes. Five. You've seen the number five dice. Two. One, two. I hope you paid attention in Miner's Helper 101 because you've got to know exactly how deep to drive those holes, exactly how much black powder to put in them, and you're going to pay me for the black powder, by the way. And how long to make your squib so it blows top, bottom, center, or bottom, top, center. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you're going to pay me for the supplies to go home and braid those squibs every night, and your squibs are your fuses. And the engineer comes and he says, now, Reggie. I want you to go right here in the Holmes vein, and I want you to drive for 100 feet at 45 degrees, 30 feet straight up, 115 feet, 56 degrees, 35 feet straight up. I'll be back to check on you later. Not only are you going to pay his wage, because oh, I'm going to yes. deduct it from your salary, because oh. to the general public, they're going to think he's making big bucks. However, what the general public doesn't know is I'm deducting and deducting and deducting until you don't have meat and potatoes. Maybe the potatoes, that's all you can afford. You had to do, it was all they could do. And you worked six days a week, because back then you only had off on a Sunday. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, lad. You're paying for the timber you put every five feet in the chute. You are paying for the lumber to build this chute. You're paying for the sheet metal that goes on it. Now you know why you're not getting meat. In your own words, who were the Mon Wires? Okay, basically, they were, there was a lady in Ireland who supposedly chased off the British tax collectors. So she was a rebel. So when the, the miners started trying to create a trade union, they were rebels against the coal companies. So the Philadelphia Reading Railroad capitalized on the, the name, the bad name of the Mom and the Guires, and exploited that name. And any, any acts of violence or terrorism, or if, if, if lightning hit a building and burned it down, their mollies were blamed for it. Mm -hmm. So the men would go on strike, maybe time, sometimes a, a boss would be mean and unfair, and uh, sometimes they would beat up a boss or retaliate and go on strike, they'll bring in strike breakers and uh, break up the strike, they bring in ruffians from New York area, Philadelphia area, to break up the strikes and get these men either back to work or fire them. Uh, the Ann Valley Railroad said, if you don't work, come work Monday morning, come to work Monday morning, you're fired, you don't have a job. So these men had no, no choice. Oh, too, because see, you had scabs working there, non-union, and you had all kind of problems with it. And they also had uh, militia come in there, and it was a matter of a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. very involved. In other words, it's not just cut and dry. Uh, even uh, some of the early immigrants that uh, were here wanted to work. And a company threatened them because they lived in a the company homes, threatened that if they would work, 
they throw them out, and they did. So any of them that would go on strike, the next day their furnishings, what little they had was out on the sidewalk, they were thrown out. So the men would ultimately go back and go to work. And the Philadelphia Railroad at that time said, well, okay, uh, we're going to now we're going to go back to work for 20% less than you fought for before. So the men had no choice but to fight back. They did work during that time. There was a few also that did work through the strike, union members that worked. Mm -hmm. And some of them, after the strike was settled, actually uh, got killed, premature explosions, powder went off before time and uh, nobody ever said knew how come it did that. Uh, union members getting even. So you can see it goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, the uh, workers did all kind of damage wherever they could to the trains, to the switches, to the trolleys that carried the men and all. They caused all kind of damage to make life miserable for workers and for the companies. This is the jail that was the way it was built back in 1871. Basically, has not changed. Were they automatically hanged? They had a fair trial with the jury. The, uh, they would select the jury from the, they put names in it, beer barrel. Um. And they put, and they, for these trials, they put in roughly 600 names. Most of the names that were put in were friends of the, the sheriff and the politicians. But some of these men were charged with crimes going back 12, 13 years. The Mollies, just hang them. How, how did the paying conditions eventually improve? The, uh, well, as the unions, as the miners became more, of a, more powerful, powerful, they, uh, they could dictate better, better wages, better, better working conditions uh, by the the sheer force of the United Mine Workers, all the miners finally got together and created a, a one union before it was left us a hodgepodge of different areas that were never organized. So after they became organized, they became more powerful. Than